good afternoon, or morning, or whatever time it is as you're watching this. I'm Zimo, and welcome to a game that can only be described as Shane Dawson's fever dream. I can't believe I'm about to say this. <laughs> it's perfect night. <laughs> I believe the main premise behind this is we're Shane Dawson, we want to fuck some cats. No, you got to expect a fair few Shane Dawson jokes. This, it just, this game is ass, is begging for it, okay? I can't believe I'm doing this. Why am I doing this to myself? And to name... Oh my god, we're actually a person. I just assumed we were going to be another cat. This actually is Shane Dawson's fever dream. That was only a joke. Wow. Fuck! Shan Dorso. No affiliation to Shane. <laughs> I'm not sure how long we've been sailing, but it feels like forever. I'm not feeling too well now, so it's a huge relief to hear the deck lad shout. Island approach! Make yourself ready, it's Joe. Joe, you do not look the same in those two pictures. <laughs> I'm finally here. When I applied last month, I was just another broke student living off of binked beans and didn't really think I had a chance of being accepted to be a part of the prestigious Cat Island research team. Yet, here it is, the little black dot in, dot in the distance, growing bigger by the second. It's the infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next few months. My heart momentarily skips a beat. What if there's been a mistake? What if they accepted someone else's application and accidentally sent the offer to me? I rummage about in my bag until I find the papers. DPI, DP Corporation Dish, and... <laughs> we are pleased to be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Pauper at our research facility on Cat Island. The position will be for an initial period over eight weeks. Your contract will be sent separately. We look forward to working with you. Yours sincerely, Professor Popper. PhD, BC, Honours, DC, DPG. No, no, no mistake. That's my name right there in the top left-hand corner. Shan Dorso. And there's his name at the bottom. The genius behind this whole operation. Professor Popper, his name does not get any less weird as we <laughs> the more times I read it. <laughs> Science genius and my new boss. I look up from my papers to see dry land rapidly approaching before us. It seems to be surrounded by a huge barrier of impenetrable black rocks. As we get closer, we're not slowing down, and I begin to worry that we're going to crash into them. Then, at the very last moment, we take a sharp turn left, and suddenly we're sailing smoothly towards a jetty through an opening in the rocks. I blow out the breath that I've been holding and break into a smile. Nicely done, Skipper. The ferryman comes from comes out from behind the steering wheel, ignoring my attempts at camaraderie, and shouts rather brusquely. Oh, fucking hell, they all have such dead expressions in the profile picture. I'm not it's an any skip. Something. Thank you. I smile weakly at the ferryman and his son, and oh, ferryman and his son, and picked up my bags, ready to disembark. We glide seamlessly up to the wooden jetty, and the sun leaps ashore to tie us off. He is greeted by a bulky man in uniform, who I take to be a security officer of some kind. Oh no. <laughs> Joe. He's, he's definitely lost some weight in this picture. <laughs> Sir, caught you a mouse. And then he l laughs loudly, as though he said the funniest thing he's ever heard. This is very disconcerting. I know those kinds of people. It is disconcerting. The security guard remains surly and turns his attention to me. Let's be having you then. He holds out his large hand, which I assume to be is an offer uh, to help me off the boat. As I reach out to take it, he snatches it away, throwing me off balance so that I almost fall over the side. I'm terrible at reading today. Um, blame it on the lack of sleep, probably that, definitely. Not that I'm borderline illiterate. <laughs> what a great start. ID card? Oh, I see, of course. I reach in my back pocket and hand over the laminated card I was given on the mainland. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Sally looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder. This way. <laughs> I get my first proper view of the island. It's beautiful, lush and green. I'm already under its spell. Oh no, Shane. Oh no. It's Shan. Shan. Definitely no lightness. He stopped at the largest of tents, indicating that I should go inside. I feel rude just walking in, so I make my presence known first. <clears throat> Hello? A firm but friendly voice calls out. Come. These guys aren't don't use many words. Oh my god, it's Bill Nye. Sir, it's an honour to meet you. Oh Shan. Oh Shan stop. Let me offer you some for refreshment. Water? Coffee? Something stronger perhaps? Whiskey? Um It will be rude to let you drink whiskey on your own. Jolly good, I can tell. You and I are gonna get along famously. Oh, Sweet baby news. Please tell me this is the guy we're going to be end up dating, not the cats, please. Finally, and without a doubt, most importantly, loop. No, I mean, a phone. He wants up something that looks a lot like a mobile phone, except it clearly isn't one. This is your catalogue. Oh, yeah, that's way better plan than I came up with. It's a very valuable piece of equipment, a Shandor, so, and I need you to protect it above all else. Do you understand? You'll get to know all the functions as you go along, but for now, I suggest we take a stroll out and see if we can't find a few friends to introduce you to, so that you can try it out. But let's not get too bogged down in all this right now. What you need to know is, basically, the island is shaped like a peanut. Oh, don't, don't, don't use words with nothing when Shandor says around. Well, we're not as sure as we'd like to be, but what I can tell you is that the environment has an adverse effect upon humans, inducing nausea at the very least. And at the worst, fainting, migraines, possible nerve damage. <laughs> that is serious. As I say, it's best to keep away, but let's not go into all that now, my dear. Can you, can you stop calling me dear? You've had a long day. For now, let's just say that we refer to the far end of the island as the danger zone, with good reason. I must ask you not to put yourself at risk by venturing beyond this mountain range here. What do you say we try out your catalogue now, Shandorso? He stoops down and picks up one of the animals, a disgruntled looking cat, who was sleeping under the shade of a palm tree. Could you have picked one that was awake? Oh, Jesus Christ. See, I never understand what Shane Dorso uh, uh, saw in cats, you know. Meow. Name? Fluffy Bob. Great. Male, 10 years, 4 months, red dummy, Persian, eye colour red. Oh really? Hadn't noticed that. Amazing. Oh, Shan, no, 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 you're getting too excited again. Shan, keep it keep it under control, okay? The person seems to be a genuine cat lover like me. Oh, he's not a cat lover like you, Shan. First cat I approach is friendly, with beautiful Kamiko markings. He comes towards me, already purring. Oh, see, that one's cute. <laughs> Meow. Trixie, female, 3 years, 8 months. Snooty booty. Please, please don't take any of this episode, this video out of context. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> Eleven years, one month, Sphinx blue eyes. The fourth cat I approach is a noisy one. Meow, 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 meow. Buck Murphy. Looks pretty cool. Okay. Male, six years, brown crossbreed and green eyes. Oh, Jesus. Hiss. Oh, he kind of looks like a youngster. Kibbles. That name is way too cute, but okay. Male, three years, white British long hair. I colour green. Well done, I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the locals. It's quite late by the time I've unpacked and settled myself, but I want to write my journal entry before I sleep. I'm surprised at how chilly it is. I have pulled my sleeping bag right up to my chin, but I still feel goose pimples bloom over my arms. Shivering, I rub them to warm myself up. It makes me smile to think that this inherent reaction to the cold is what will be keeping my few new feline friends warm tonight. My eyelids close. Thinking of cats, and the island, and the professor. The world around me drifts away as I float into a dream. D what? Why did that just say it's beginning? W w hold up, hold up, rewind. Is this a fucking horror game? What is this game? I don't even know. I'm not sure how long I've been asleep, but I wake with a violent jolt that leaves me sitting bolt upright. It's too dark to say anything, but I hear a rustling and a strange electronic noise. One that, in my sleepy confusion, I can't place right away. Oh, I can place that right away. The catalogue, yes. Acting on instinct, I scramble to my feet and follow the noise out of the tent. I look around me and my fears are confirmed when I catch sight of a pulsing red light getting fainter in the direction of the forest. I snap into action, running as fast as I can. 
barefoot, dressed in my pyjamas, running at full speed into the forest in the dark of night. I must be crazy. You must be Shan. The words of Professor Pauper are ringing in my ears. I need you to protect it above all else. My legs are trembling beneath me. I stop, feeling my heart beat heavy throughout my body. I wheeze in and out, my breath billowing in front of me in white puffs. I shouldn't feel like this. Why am I so dizzy? I'm trying to get my bearings and realise I've blundered perilously close to the danger zone. I just make out the shapes of some large animals in front of me, before my eyes close and I drop to my knees. Uh, oh god, am I going to do voices? Hello? No, I'm not No, No, I'm not going to do voices. Hello, can you hear me? I mean, I've not done voices for anything else. Are you okay? What is it? Don't be ridiculous, kibbles, it's a human. Oh yeah, yuck, I can smell it now. It smells like a human. Oh, do be quiet. Oh, do be quiet. I can kind of picture that voice. Are you alive? Yes, I am alive. Of course, <laughs> of course it's alive. It's breathing, you imbecile. Is this one defective? Oh, I feel sick. I'm going to puke. Scared and confused. Let me talk to them. Um, human? Are you alright? You. I remember. You, you took my catalogue. Oh, but I gave it back to you. It's back in your pocket now. I try to reach into my pocket and realize my hands are scratched to shreds. Yeah, I guess that's from all the climbing. Climbing? Told you it wasn't ready for that. What's that? Ready for what? It's an anatomical structure is far too delicate. Try to slow that. Uh, uh, guys, just context, please. What the fuck are you on about? Made your own way back to the beach. Okay, but that doesn't explain. I show my bleeding hands. Ah, you crawl. The way from the mountains? Like a bleeding mountain lion. Impressive. But why? Because you got the sickness. The sickness turns you into a cat, doesn't it? Uh, maybe you should sit down, human. We need to have a talk. Possibly a long talk. Talk? Yes, that's right. Since when can cats talk? Oh, for goodness sake, since the dawn of time, how else do you think we communicate? Ah, oh, stop splitting whiskers, Major. You know full well what the human is saying. I think the revelation here, Carla, is that you can understand this. Yes, that too. Will someone please explain what the hell is going on here? I think I've already called this. Well, we don't fully understand everything ourselves. At least, not all the details of how this works. I think being stood in the forest, surrounded by a bunch of talking cats, is about as much detail anyone would want. I agree, and more to the point, we are rather hoping you will be able to help us. You are the scientist, after all. What we do know is that the clock has started ticking for you. What do you mean? There's no easy way to say this to you, Kara, but if you don't do something, you're going to be a cat like McMurphy. You'll be catified. Yep, call it. It would seem. We are basing this on our own experiences to date, that when a human manages to find themselves in what I believe you call the danger zone, they are vulnerable in ways that they previously were not. That is to say, you're screwed. So you said you need my help? What exactly would that entail? Well, finding our friends would be a start. The cats on this island, they're going missing. We don't know what's happening to them, but the body count is rising and we've hit a wall. A wall of ignorance, maybe. But really, how many times do I have to tell you? The mules are to blame. Look, they can't help the way they are. It's lack of breeding, you know. Overbreeding, if you ask me. Again, mules, uh, although the elder cats, the island originals, they can't speak the way we can, hence the derogatory term, mules. And how are they to blame exactly? Well, if I knew that, there would have, have been no need for this elaborate kidnapping. It's hardly proving to be a roaring success after all. <laughs> it's a gradual process. It's different for everyone, but you won't just turn overnight. The clock is ticking, however. First side effect of the transition is being able to understand us. Well, some of us. Not the elders, obviously. Not all the domestics, either. Then you have the whole height sensor thing, the increased agility, the crazy body hair stuff. Let's not worry that you with all the details just yet. I assume there's an antidote? I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed in that assumption. Oh no. Hang on, you said there was someone else who'd, who you'd put in this position. Well, let's hope you're a better bet than they were. Unfortunately, they weren't able to discover an antidote. Or we'll get our friends back. I know where their notes are though. Really? Trade. Huh? You help us, and I'll give you their progress reports. What do you say, Carl? Will you help us? Oh, part me just want to fucking say no. <laughs> but I don't want it to end and have to go through all that dialogue, so I'll say yes. Not much of a choice, really, is it? <laughs> Afraid not. Okay, fine. 
So where do I start? Is there anything you can tell me that will help me track down your missing friends? Well, no one listen to sense. Start with the Mueller's, and I'll eat my hat if it doesn't end there too. Don't mind him. He's set in his ways. We have every reason to believe the abductions take place in your part of the island. In other words, he's racist. <laughs> it's nowhere near the danger zone for the elders. Well, that doesn't make much sense, but I suppose nothing does around this place. Someone just fucking set their Android timer and recorded that. Oh, my alarm! I have to get to work. You run along now. We want, we don't want you arousing suspicions with your people. You can meet with us later. <laughs> I'll make sure those reports are in your tent before this evening. That's guy, you're one in a million. I imagine the odds are far greater than that, given your new health status. Go! And thanks from all of us. And I think that's going to be a good, that's going to be a place to end it. I've got it there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more uh, in the comments. If you want to see me continue, let me know. I just noticed my webcam has been covering up text half the time. If there is a second episode, I'll move the webcam. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, but yes, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you want to see another. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs> Until next time, from Shandorso and I. <laughs> Take care.